To know where is up and where is down. To be able to ride a bicycle or even to keep the balance standing on our own feet. This is only possible because we have a kind of gyroscope inside our head, the semicircular canals. This is one of the structures that form what we call the labyrinth of the inner ear. These canals help to coordinate the movements of the eyes, head and neck. That's why they are so important for balance during locomotion. They are really helpful for keeping your gaze stable. Have you ever heard about labyrinthitis? It's a disease that causes malfunctions in these canals, which makes you feel dizzy and off balance. Many animals have these canals, and they can have very different shapes and sizes. For example, you might think that birds and crocodiles, who evolved from the same group of animals a long time ago, would have very similar canal shapes. In fact, they have very different canal shapes, and we also know they have very different lifestyles. Could it be that differences in the shape of the canals are somehow linked to the lifestyle of these animals? To answer this question, we have to look into the past. To investigate the ancient group of animals that birds and crocodiles evolved from, Archosauria. The first archosaurs appear in the fossil record about 250 million years ago and were very different animals from the birds and crocodiles today. But I'm sure you might know of some of them. Archosaurs had many different types of locomotion. They represent a great group to test if the differences in the canals could be related to differences in locomotion. Our new study, published in Current Biology, will illuminate the pathway to lead us out of this labyrinth. Our team was able to make 3D digital models of the canals of many living reptiles, as well as 37 different extinct archosaur species. For the first time, we were able to investigate how these canals evolved at the very origins of Archosauria. In our study, we show that soon after the split of the Avian Coccolidian lineage of Archosaurs around 240 million years ago, the semicircular canals of the oldest relatives of birds and crocs were already different. However, we also show that the semicircular canals of the first Archosaurs were different from the semicircular canals we observe in the animals today. This goes against this idea that crocodilians retain a more primitive condition in relation to birds. Could it be possible that the large canals of birds are related to their ability to fly? Many thought that this was the case, but when we studied these fossils, we found a very different story. Our study shows that pterosaurs, the flying reptiles of the past, possessed canals that were small to moderate in size when we compared them to other archosaurs. This is more evidence that Big canals are not necessary for flight. The same is true for bats, which have canals that are smaller than those of other mammals that can't fly. But what are big canals for, if not for flying? Canals, as large as those seen in birds, are also found in dinosaurs. It is possible then that the evolution of big canals are needed for stability during locomotion types that require a lot of balance control, like fast arboreal climbers. Or perhaps it is related to higher visual acuity, which is the ability of an animal to see more shape and detail in the things that they look at. When we look at the semicircular canals of living birds and crocodilians, we can spot some difference between them. For example, the semicircular canals of birds are rounded and they are taller than the semicircular canals of crocodilians, which are also not as rounded as the one we see in birds. Many paleontological studies relied on the morphology of the semicircular canals to infer the habits of the animals from the past. For example, the rounded canals we see in pterosaurs, we thought it was related to their ability to fly, given that we also see rounded canals in living birds. However, non-flying animals also exhibit rounded canals as the one we see in these animals. In fact, the rounded canals of birds is more related to the shape of their skull, which is also rounded at the posterior part. In the same way, the lower canals we see in crocodilians are more related to their flattened skull. But if the shape of the canals is not very informative, the size of these structures are. For instance, larger canals can process more information, which enhances bodily coordination during movements. The great size variation observed in the canals of these very first archosaurs might then reflect a burst of ecological diversity, adding a new piece of evidence that helps us to better understand the rise of archosaurs in the Mesozoic era.